Business Secretary Lord Mandelson joins us now live. Lord Mandelson, thank you for joining us in live. What's your... Well, I've spoken to the Prime Minister by and you know, you'll understand that he's deeply upset by the hurt caused uh, to Mrs Duffy. Uh, these are not his views, either privately or, or publicly. He's explained that to Mrs Duffy and has apologised unreservedly, as you'd expect him to do. What could have happened for him to call a 66-year-old widow a bigot when we actually heard what she said and she didn't seem bigoted in her views? She's represented the Labour Party in her local community of life. There's no justification. You know, politicians are human uh, and you know, they have these conversations. They then get into a car, they say things in the heat of the moment, and like all of us, sometimes you say things that you simply do not mean. Uh, and straight away, he telephoned Mrs Duffy uh, to apologise. Uh, is the hurt caused to her? Um, it's not in his nature uh, to want to hurt people uh, like that, and that's why he would have acted uh, immediately uh, as he did. He is very upset. But he did seem to be criticising uh, people around him. Uh, he named one of his uh, close team by name. Uh, and in an interview afterwards on the radio, he was, he was critical, I mean, he was basically shooting the messenger, critical of the fact that the uh, exchange with the other person in the car had uh, in some way been broadcast. So he didn't seem, in the moment, uh, taking any of the blame. He was blaming other people. No, I don't think that's right. I talked to Gordon immediately afterwards and he certainly wasn't blaming anyone else other than himself. Um, I mean, he, look, he knows that, you know, when you're in a situation like that, when you've had a tough conversation or a difficult encounter, that that's what happens in, in an election campaign. That's what happens when you're on the road. That's what happens when you meet uh, uh, voters. And that's what he needs to do and he'll continue to do so. These conversations uh, can sometimes be difficult, but that's in the nature of an election. Uh, what he will do is obviously uh, express uh, his uh, great upset and express a very deeply felt apology uh, to Mrs uh, Duffy. Uh, as I said, what will really upset him is the hurt that has been caused to her, and, and he'll feel that very deeply, and he said that to her. Is he tired? Is he tired? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're all slightly tired. It's been a very long campaign. But that isn't an excuse uh, for letting off steam as uh, uh, he did. But, you know, that's what all of us do sometimes. And I'm afraid that we are all human. And we do say things that we don't mean. We do say things that we don't uh, believe. Uh, you don't expect them to be uh, picked up by a microphone? Obviously not. Uh, but. You know, the, the fact is that he doesn't believe this of Mrs Duffy. He doesn't believe it either publicly or privately. Uh, he did let off steam. Very regrettable that he did, given the presence of a microphone. Uh, and there's no justification for it. I'm afraid these things happen uh, in politics. They happen in life. They happen to us all. And the right thing uh, to do is what he did, uh, to talk to her, to apologise, uh, and to try and make up uh, for the hurt that his remark caused to her. So, given that he, he was said that but he didn't mean it, how do we know when we can believe what the Prime Minister is saying and how do we know when we can't? He's a sincere man. He, he has strong convictions, he has strong beliefs. Uh, he also has a very strong code of how to behave and how to act uh, personally in, in all reaches of his life. Uh, whether in politics or as Prime Minister or, or, or just as a straightforward human being. And I know that and those close to him uh, know that. Uh, and I would ask you to accept that and those who are looking at this interview now. And um, what would you say to people, who, I'm sure there would be an awful lot of people watching you right now, Lord Mandelson, who will feel that this is enormously damaging for the Labour Party when the Prime Minister refers to a, an elderly pensioner as a bigot, what would you say to try um, to reassure them that, that, that it isn't damaging, that isn't really uh, what the Labour Party represents? That, that you must judge him not simply by what he has uh, said in the heat of the moment, but judge him 
by what he says uh, in apology, uh, not by way of explanation or justification, but acting immediately uh, to try to clear up, to heal the hurt that he has caused to Mrs Duffy. That's how I believe uh, people uh, should judge him. And for the government and for the Labour Party uh, as a whole, uh, we are a party of compassionate people. Uh, we are a party of people who care about others, like Mrs V, who respect her point of view, who listen uh, to uh, the concerns that people have about immigration in this case, but any other uh, social or political or economic issue. We listen. Uh, we are a party uh, committed to people's welfare, and the only way to be committed to people's welfare is by understanding their lives, what they're going through, the struggle that life sometimes brings, and what they're feeling. And we address those concerns, and we'll continue to do so. And in my view, Gordon Brown, more than any other, uh, wants to do that. Uh, that's what makes him uh, a man not just of political conviction, but a man of a real deep sense uh, of, of moral purpose as well and compassion and real fellow feeling for other people, which is why it will upset him so greatly uh, that in the heat of the moment um, he has in a sense betrayed those views or betrayed those feelings and given a completely different uh, impression. I'm sorry, but these things happen uh, occasionally when you say things that uh, you don't mean. Uh, but as I say, the judgment of him is what he does immediately afterwards. And I think he's done the right thing. And I think most people, fair-minded people, will accept that. But you accept, do you not, that he will have alienated people by what he has said today? Not least Mrs Duffy, as I said, she's been a lifelong Labour supporter. She said you're not going to get her vote this time. Well, I fully understand why Mrs Duffy said that uh, in the immediate uh, aftermath of, uh, of being told what the Prime Minister said uh, in private and what he was picked up uh, as saying. Of course, the Prime Minister has since spoken to uh, Mrs Duffy. Uh, he has given an unreserved apology, and it's a heartfelt one too. A final thought. Um, obviously, we have the uh, leaders' debate coming up tomorrow. Presumably the Prime Minister will need to in some way talk about this in more detail ahead of that tomorrow. What would you expect him to say when he does face the camera, the microphone, uh, at the next location he gets to? He, he will say in public what he feels in private. Uh, he, I, I know he feels mortified by the hurt uh, to Mrs Duffy uh, and he will say that. He'll say what he feels uh, and I think people uh, we'll take that at face value. Of course, uh, people will judge him one way uh, or another. But I can tell you, he's feeling now extremely uh, uh, sorry, very sincerely, about the hurt that he's caused. Is that because he's been caught out or because he really means it? No, it's not because he's been caught out. It's because he doesn't have these private feelings. This is not what he believes. But as I said to you uh, earlier on, Kay, all of us, you do it. I do it, everyone does it. We sometimes say things in the heat of a moment which we don't mean. We sometimes cause hurt to people which immediately on second thought we wish we hadn't done. We all do it. He's done it and he's apologised unreservedly for it. Do you think he'll let us have our microphone back? <laughs> I should think he'll let you have your microphone back and indeed you might even wish that uh, you'd kept it to yourself in the first place. <laughs> Lord Mandelson, always a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Sky News. Thank you. Thank you very much. News at sky.com 84501. Our political editor, Adam Bolton, listening to what Lord Mandelson had to say.